Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all getting through this pain in the butt pandemic, okay? Uh, if you're like me and you are really getting frustrated and not being able to travel, <laughs> uh, at the moment I'm out in the Philippines uh, and I'm stuck here. So if you're like me and you're getting really frustrated and not being able to travel, then uh, I'm gonna be releasing a new video every week. Now, I recently got back into the Fujifilm ecosystem and I'm gonna give you five reasons why you should buy or at least consider buying the Fuji X-T4. Oh yeah, um, do you like my little office? It's a spare room at the moment. Um, I have got a load of studio stuff in, uh, but I haven't got it yet. Obviously being in the Philippines, the postal service is a little bit slow, so. Uh, I'm impatient to get started putting more videos out there. Uh, so, what do you think? It's pretty echoey, so I apologize for the audio. The five reasons. First one, uh, and some people will disagree with this, some people won't, it depends how you like to shoot, but it's these control dials. On top of the X-T4, you've got control dials for uh, ISO, shutter speed, and then obviously combined with the aperture ring on the lenses, you've got the aperture control there. Now, I like these for several reasons. One of them, simply, I like the look of them on the camera. I just, you know, call me a sucker but I like the retro look, it makes it feel more like a camera. If you get to the practicalities of it, when you're doing landscape photography, which I do quite a lot of um, for a hobby, I've done it professionally before and I'll probably be starting to do it more, uh, more professional work again uh, coming up in the next few months. Uh, you can look down and you can set it with a PASM dial, normal PASM dial that you get on all the other camera brands. If you look down at the camera as you're shooting, it's on a tripod and you look, you take a quick glance, it doesn't show you your camera settings. So you're not 100% sure what the shutter speed is, what the ISO is, uh, and what the aperture is, just by looking at the, physically at the camera. You've got to go back into the screen or the LCD or whatever it is. Um, now it's not a big deal, um, but I like being able to see my settings. I can just quickly glance at it and say, okay, great, I'm at, you know, one second, IS, base ISO, uh, my aperture is whatever, you know, f8, and whatever it was, happens to be. Um, so that is a really good reason. If you come from a photography background and you like using cameras and you like the tactile feel of changing your dials uh, and you like ergonomically doing that, you know, you can pretty easily reach up to your eye and just flick the ISO. Uh, and when you're shooting landscapes in particular, uh, it's very useful to be able to see, physically see the dials and what your settings are. Also, if you're shooting, um, if you're shooting portraits, I find it quite useful because yes, you can set the minimum shutter speed on your auto ISO, um, but I find it quite useful that I can just, if I'm gonna shoot portraits and I'm, uh, you know, if I'm just quickly grabbing street portraits or whatever, you know, a quick family grab shot or whatever, you can just quickly bump your shutter speed up to 1 60th or 1 2 50th or whatever it is that you want just to make sure that you're going to freeze that motion you're going to get a sharp portrait. So the dials is definitely one of the things that Fuji is well known for and uh, give it a try because I think if you come from that sort of photographic background or even if you don't, you'll enjoy the experience. Now the second reason, and actually this is probably for me the most important reason, uh, is IBIS. So it's got in-body image stabilization. Finally on a Fuji body that I want. I had it previously on the X-H1, um, but on the X-T series, this is a first. Uh, it's not on my X-Pro3, it's not on any of the other X-series bodies that I've had before. Uh, it's five axis image stabilization. If you combine it with an OIS Fuji lens, you're gonna get up to six stops. I don't quite get six stops. I get about four to five, but it's really useful for those times that you don't wanna lug around a tripod, which let's face it, a lot of the time you don't. I travel a lot of the time with my wife and my daughter who's four. The chances of me carrying the tripod with me if I'm with them are pretty slim. Because uh, half the time, by the time she's tired, my daughter Sophia, uh, she'll wanna jump on my shoulder. Well, that's where I'd carry my tripod. So uh, tripod stays at home, my daughter comes with me. My daughter's more fun. Um, so IBIS is a big, big help. Uh, it allows you sometimes with wide angle lenses like the 10 to 24, I can get down to shutter speeds of a second, which just allows you to blur sort of motion in the water. If you're photographing waterfalls, which there's tons of around here, uh, or rivers, ocean, whatever it is. Um, it's really handy. Also, it means that you don't have to bump up the uh, ISO. 
Uh, so if you're shooting in sort of poor light conditions, uh, rather than bumping up the ISO, you can actually drop the shutter speed down below the sort of reciprocal focal length rule. Um, so normally if I was shooting with 10 millimeter, I'd want to be shooting at like at least 1 20th of a second, but I can drop that down now to get sort of around about a second, half a second. So it's really, really handy. Uh, also, it's great for video because uh, you can just about, if you put some slow motion shots in and you do it handheld with the IBIS, you can get away with not using a gimbal. Again, it's going to save you weight, save you carrying things. Uh, I've always been used to having Olympus IBIS on the cameras. Um, Sony has it as well. So it's not exclusive to Fuji, but it's a huge bonus that Fuji have included this now on the X-T4. So mwah, well done IBIS. That was the, the deal breaker for me that stopped me getting the X-T3. Number three uh, is the size. Now, while the actual camera body itself is not that much smaller than something like a Sony a7 III uh, or a lot of the other camera bodies like a Nikon Z6, once you put on the lenses, which are APS-C lenses, uh, they are actually significantly smaller as a package. Um, and one of the things that actually stopped me from buying an X-T3 before was uh, the feeling of the body. I always felt that the grip here was slightly too shallow and the body, and I put this in a previous review a long time ago on an X-T1, but even the X-T2 and X-T3, it, the body used to feel hollow. It doesn't feel dense, doesn't feel solid. Now the weight of the X-T4 is slightly more than those previous X-T series bodies, but it feels so much better in the hand. Uh, the grip is slightly deeper now, uh, and the weight of it, it's slightly more, but it, more than the weight, it's the feeling of solidity in the body. Uh, and when you combine this with some of the very small primes, like the 35mm f2, 23 and the 50 f2s, it makes for a really small package. Also, if you have something like 10 to 24 lens, 18 to 55, uh, even the 55 to 200, they're all very, very small compared to full frame sized uh, lenses. Uh, obviously, they've only got to cover a smaller image circle, so it's just basic science, but that for me is a big plus because I do a lot of traveling. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't at the moment, do I? No one does, but hopefully we'll get back to that again soon. And when we do, having those smaller lenses means I can fit more lenses in my bag not carry the extra weight, I'll be more comfortable, I can walk further, go further, and just be more comfortable, and still get excellent image. Number four, and this is a biggie. Uh, one of the problems from the previous X series bodies, all of them, but particularly on an XT and an X Pro 3, was the battery. I'm gonna get the other battery and show you. Now this, because I'm a cheapskate, is a knockoff EX Pro, Fuji NPW126 battery. This is the battery that all XT and X Pro series cameras used to use, and the reason why I've still got one as well is because the X Pro 3 uses it now. The battery life on these is not great. I think my daughter's just come back in, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, you should run past the door. As soon as she hears me talking, she'll want to know what I'm, what I'm doing. She'll probably want to join the video, I might let her. Anyway, these batteries don't last very long. I used to get something like 300 shots per charge which is not great, she's trying to come in now. I told you Sophia would want to come in on the video. This is my daughter Sophia. And you like all daddy's cameras? Yeah. Okay, so what we want to tell the people is, this battery, they used to use this battery, the NPW126 in the Fuji X-T4. <laughs> it didn't last very long, it only lasted, how long did it last? Two, two or three hours. Two or three hours. Two or three hours. And now we're using the new battery in the X-T4, aren't we? Can you read what that says? It says NPW235. Oh, I can't read that. You can't read that. Well, 235 is more than 126, right? I can't right? read anything. You can't read anything? Well, you will be able to soon, won't you? Yeah. So the battery in the Fuji X-T4 now lasts for four to 500 shots, on average, I'm finding, uh, which is so much better than the previous battery. Uh, I've got this one, uh, I've got three of these, uh, and uh, two of them obviously go in the battery grip that I've got and that is enough to last me for a good long weekend of shooting Daddy. or more. So, show them the new battery, Sophia. Mm. What's inside? There's a battery inside, isn't it? Daddy. You can't take it apart, it'll be broken. Oh. <laughs> and this is the old one, isn't it? Which one's better? The old one or the new one? The new one, there you go. Well, if Sophia says the new battery's better, that's reason number four. And that's uh, all you need to know. Reason number five, five, yeah, 
is the Fuji JPEGs and the film simulation profiles are fantastic. Uh, if you're like me, you don't particularly love editing photos, or at least I don't like spending loads of time in front of uh, a Lightroom or Capture One. I use both of them. Uh, yeah, number five, yeah. Then uh, the Fuji JPEGs, the uh, film simulation profiles, they give you a great starting point to start your editing. Uh, now obviously they're applied to the JPEG, I shoot JPEG and RAW, but when you import what's the images, a... when you Im <laughs> what, what's a RAW? Yeah. I think that's for another video, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. When you import the images into Lightroom or into Capture One, you can apply the uh, Fuji profiles, the film simulation profiles, to the RAW file, and it gives you a great starting point so you can flick through all the different various profiles. The JPEGs are so good that for most things, uh, you can use the JPEG, um, but I also shoot RAW for landscapes, it just you can eke out a little bit more detail. But I can start, particularly with portraits, I can start from the RAW file, I can use the film simulation profile as a base, and then I can tweak it from there. So it's a great starting point. Even if you're shooting RAW, it's a great starting point for your image. Okay guys, so that is five reasons why you should at least consider, I don't want to tell you to buy it, but you should at least consider the Fuji X-T4. Those are five of the reasons why I bought this camera. Uh, I've been using it now for six months um, and I've just, I found it does everything I need. Uh, the image quality is great uh, and the handling, everything it answered. Um, they basically addressed all the issues I had with the previous X-T3 uh, and they have made what I consider to be the best hybrid camera available. Um, today. Reason number six, I'll give you a bonus reason. Um, in fact, it's two, so I'm going to give you two bonuses. One is that they have now added a still and a movie mode, so you can save all your settings for stills, and then you simply flick the little dial on here, and you're into movie mode, and you can have a separate load of settings saved for movie mode. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? So you can have different settings for video, and then switch it over, and you're straight back into your photography settings, and it remembers those. And there's now an articulating screen. I know some Fuji uh, diehard people sort of don't like these articulating screens, uh, but the articulating screen is really handy. Gives you loads of different angles and viewpoints to do. Anyway, that's your five or six reasons why you should buy the Fuji X-T4. I'm gonna go now because we're having a barbecue. Uh, I'll be doing another video next week. So join me then. Hopefully I'll have some of my other gear to sort of make the audio a little bit better. Because it's a bit echo in here, isn't it? and some lighting and different things. Um, <laughs> next week I'm gonna give you um, something else on Fuji, I'm not sure yet, but it'll probably be something along the lines of the X-Pro3 or talking about the X-T4 more. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you did find this video useful, then you can subscribe, which would be really appreciated. Uh, hit the like button. <laughs> hit the notifications bell so that you get notified when the next video comes out next week. Uh, and I'll see you on the next one. Are you going to do that so that we're cool? Zoom. Zoom. You have to do it in front of the lens. Go on. Don't touch the lens. Just do it right in front of it. Ah, there you go. Bye then.